Today, in a somewhat rare migration, the person featured yesterday in our opening monologue has now moved straight away to our cancellation monologue. That's Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, a man so slight and unimpressive that he makes Eric Swalwell look almost masculine by comparison. And he is the one being canceled today. He was already effectively canceled yesterday upon the news that he had vetoed a bill that would have banned the chemical castration of children in the state, calling it a, quote, vast government overreach to prevent doctors from genitally mutilating children or giving hormone blockers to children. Hutchinson, a Republican governor in the South, let's remember, took the side of the most fringe and radical elements of the LGBT left. Indeed, he took a side that not but five or ten years ago, even many on the LGBT, LGBT left would have opposed or claimed to oppose. But as we know, mainstream conservatism is often just leftism about a half a decade behind. So Asa Hutchinson, in this case, is right on schedule. Fortunately, the Arkansas General Assembly performed what you might call a legislate, legislative castration of the governor by overriding his veto and enacting the ban anyway. Hutchinson apparently decided that he had not been defrocked and humiliated enough. So he went on Tucker Carlson last night to try and defend his decision to veto the bill. Now, an intelligent man, or at least a man who cares about his own dignity, might have realized that his position is literally indefensible, as in it cannot be defended, and thus he would have declined the invitation to go on cable news, the top cable news program in the country, and try and defend it, because he can't. But Hutchinson is not that sort of man, and so this is what happened. Let's watch. Well, the legislature in Arkansas recently passed a bill that would ban doctors from prescribing so-called puberty blockers, having to do hormones, to children who believe they're transgender. The law also bans surgeons from physical castration of children. But the governor of Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson, vetoed that bill on Monday. Legislatures in Arkansas just voted to override that veto, which brings us to where we are right now. Asa Hutchinson is the governor of Arkansas, and he joins us to talk about this story. Governor, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it in the middle of all this. Now, I, I think of you as a conservative. Here you've come out publicly as pro-choice on the question of chemical castration of okay, children. Okay, let's, let's, pa let's pause there for just a moment. Tucker's introduction of the governor and of the issue is absolutely fair. He summarized things quite succinctly and accurately. But I want you to just reflect on, on this for a moment. This man, Asa Hutchinson, was either so terrified of upsetting the far left or so beholden to his corporate interests, or both, I think both, that he's willing to be known. He's willing to be known now as a man who is, as Tucker said, pro-choice on the chemical castration of children. He's willing to sit there, his smiling mug presented to the camera, and take ownership of the view that sometimes it's good to drug, mutilate, and castrate young boys to turn them into girls. Whatever Hutchinson thinks that he's winning as a result of his self-debasement here, I can guarantee that the reward is not worth the cost. There's no way it can be. So once again, a Republican has given up everything, his dignity, everything, and in exchange, he gets nothing. But it gets worse. Let's listen now to his, uh, his explanation. This bill was overbroad, it was extreme, it went far beyond what you just said. And I made it clear that this, if this was about prohibiting uh, procedures, uh, sex reassignment surgery, absolutely, I would have signed that bill. But this, again, is the first law in the nation that uh, invokes uh, the state between uh, medical decisions, parents who consent to that, and uh, the decision of the patient. And so this goes way too far. And in fact, it doesn't even have a grandfather clause that those uh, young people that okay. are under hormonal oh, treatments, oh, okay, but if, uh, if, they if, have if I could just, if I could just correct it. you for a second. Well, this is chemical castration, of course. If you stop puberty and suppress the sex hormones, you're chemically castrating someone. So our, our, our description was correct. But let me just ask you, I mean, there are all kinds of, we're talking about minors, children here, and there are all kinds of things in Arkansas, kids in every state are not allowed to do. Get married, drink a beer, get a tattoo. Why do you think it's important for conservatives to make certain that children can block their puberty, be chemically castrated? Why is that a conservative value, if you would tell us? Well, first of all, you have parents involved in very difficult decisions. You have physicians that are involved in these decisions. And uh, I go back to William Buckley. I go back to Ronald Reagan, the principles of our party, uh, which believes in a limited role of government. Are okay. we as a All right. There it is there. Limited role. Okay. Ronald Reagan, 
Apparently, Ronald Reagan was pro-castration. Yeah, you know, I come to think of it, I, I seem to remember that. What was the famous uh, Reagan quote? It was, uh, Mr. Gorbachev, tear off these balls. Now, <clears throat> that might be a slight, I'm prouder of that joke than I should be. I really am. That might be a slight paraphrase. I don't, I don't remember exactly what the quote was, to be honest. In any case, Hutchinson, besides posthumously recruiting Buckley and Reagan into, into his uh, sex changes for 12-year-olds camp, seems to provide these primary rationales. This, this is, this is the re- these are the reasons that he just gave, right? Um, one, the government should not interfere with the decisions of patients. Two, this is a difficult decision for parents and doctors, and the government shouldn't interfere with, their, with that either. And three, we as conservatives should support limited government. And then four, Walmart told me to say this. Now, admittedly, point four is more subtext. As for points one through three, let, let's take them one at a time. First, the decision of patients. Well, as we covered yesterday, and I've covered many times, the patients are children. They can't consent. They can't make this decision. They're not capable. It is incoherent to say that a 13-year-old um, can, you know, it, it is incoherent, incoherent to say that a 13-year-old cannot consent to sex, and yet that he can consent to a sex change. The same logic and science, psychological and neurological science, that supports the notion that 13-year-olds can't consent to sex, which they can't, also applies just as much, if not more so, to sex changes. If you take the one position, you're logically committed to the other. Second, this is a difficult decision for parents and doctors. Now, Hutchinson here, who calls himself pro-life, is echoing the exact talking points of the pro-abortion left. We're told that killing babies is a solemn and difficult decision that mothers must sometimes make in consultation with their doctors. But the difficulty of the decision is irrelevant. I mean, it may be difficult for a wife who decides to kill her husband in consultation with her hitman. It may be a, it may, it's a difficult and personal decision. She may agonize over it. She may think long and hard about it. And the thing that, but the thing that makes it difficult is that murdering your husband is a terrible thing to do. What makes abortion difficult is that murdering your child is a terrible thing to do. What makes the medical transitioning of children difficult is that it's a terrible thing to do. In fact, in the case of medical transition and abortion, if these decisions were really what their proponents describe, if the people on the pro side were correct in their view, then these decisions shouldn't be difficult at all. If a baby is nothing but a non-human lump of meaningless cells, why is it difficult to destroy it? You say, it's just a lump of cells. Okay, well then what do you talk about? It's a difficult decision. Sounds easy to me. And if a boy really does have a girl trapped inside him, whatever that means, and you can free this, this true inner female identity through medical procedures that we're told have no ill effects and no real downside, then again, why is it a difficult decision? I mean, there's a, there's a girl trapped inside there. Get her out. But again, the difficulty is, uh, is sort of a moot point in deciding whether the government has a role. And that brings us to point three. Hutchinson says that this is a matter of limited government, which only proves a point that I've made in the past that limited government is a really insufficient and frankly kind of stupid slogan for conservatism. And, you know, we've all shouted it. I have too. But limited government has been mostly a shield for cowards like Hutchinson to hide behind. That's really what it is, uh, what, what it's been in practice. That's how it's worked. Anytime they encounter a fight that they're too afraid to get involved in, they can always lift up the banner of limited government and, um, and pretend that they're deserting the battlefield out of principle. It's like a soldier who suddenly becomes a Quaker the moment the first bullet flies. You know, he sees that first bullet fly over his head. He says, you know what? Uh, I think the Quakers had a, had a point. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it again. I read one of those pamphlets a long time. I think, you know, I think I sort of, I think I'm a Quaker now. Limited government conservatives have, in fact, at every level from the presidency on down, expanded the government exponentially and spent money by the trillions. But then when it comes to protecting children from the worst forms of abuse and indoctrination, suddenly they discover their long dormant passion for governmental restraint. It's a joke and we should all be too smart to fall for it. The, the banner that we should be marching under is not something vague and overbroad and useless like limited government, but rather something, something that perhaps on second thought won't fit on a banner at all. Something like, we want a government that is properly ordered and directed 
and which uses its power in judicious, lawful, and morally sound ways in order to fulfill its fundamental obligations to its people. Like I said, not going to fit on a banner. But the point is that we aren't asking the government to uninvolve itself from everything. And one area where the government should certainly be involved is in the protection and defense of vulnerable citizens who cannot protect or defend themselves. Vulnerable citizens such as children who, if they manage to survive the gauntlet of the modern womb, now face the very real possibility that they're going to have their minds warped by radical gender theorists and then their bodies deformed to match their warped minds. This is a place for the government to step in. If this is not a place for government to step in, then I can't imagine where else government should step in. If this is not a job for the government, then what could be a job for the government? If we, if we uh, you know, restrain government here, then how can we justify exerting the government anywhere else? We can't. I mean, that's clear. It's clear even to Ace Hutchinson. But he's decided to pretend that he doesn't understand what he certainly does understand. And for that, today, we must transition Asa Hutchinson to the status of canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.